Hey guys, welcome to the UF Disciple channel. Today, up for review, we have the Gigabyte GTX 980 Ti G1 Gaming Graphics Card. So let's get started. The Gigabyte G1 Gaming GTX 980 Ti is Gigabyte's second tier offering for their 980 Ti lineup, being recently supplanted by the 980 Ti Extreme Gaming Card. The G1 980 Ti features the standard 980 Ti feature such as the 2816 CUDA cores and the 6 gigabytes of 384-bit GDDR5 VRAM clocked at 7010 MHz. The G1 Gaming measures in at 296 millimeters in length and is complete with DVI-I, DVI-D, HDMI, and three DisplayPort 1.2 ports for outputs. For power, it is recommended that you have a 600 watt power supply with two 8-pin PCIe power connectors. Physically speaking, you'll find this gorgeous black and silver design scheme with a well-constructed aluminum backplate. The G1 Gaming also features an illuminated WinForce logo on the side of the card, as well as indicators to let you know if the fans are spinning or not if the card is under 63 degrees Celsius. The 980 Ti G1 features a base clock of 1190 MHz, with my card having a GPU boost clock of 1366 MHz. For my G1 Gaming, I was able to achieve a stable overclock at 1467 MHz core clock and 7806 MHz memory clock without pushing too hard for a 7% core overclock and an 11% memory overclock. Going on to the benchmarking data, for all of the benchmarks I ran the car with my i7-6700K which was overclocked to 4.4 GHz and had 32GB of DDR4 2133MHz RAM. I tested a variety of games at the highest graphic settings possible in each game with the resolutions of 1920x1080, 2560x1440, and 3840x2160. I tested the GTX 980 Ti with Batman Arkham Knight, Crisis 3, Far Cry 4, Grand Theft Auto 5, Metro Last Light, Middle Earth Shadow of Mortar, Tomb Raider, and The Witcher 3, as well as with the synthetic benchmark for Fire Strike. Each of these benchmarks was run at both the out-of-the-box speeds as well as with the overclock applied. Stop the video whenever you need to take a further look at the graph since the overall highlights will only be discussed. Let's move over to the comparison with the other 980 Ti that I've tested, the Galax GTX 980 Ti Hall of Fame. Based on pure frame rate data, in certain games the G1 performs significantly better than the Hall of Fame, but in others it's a near even split. Price to performance wise, however, is a different story. Currently in South Africa, the Galax Hall of Fame goes for 11,799 South African Rand on Wootware's website, and the G1 Gaming goes for 13,148 Rand. In some games, the G1 takes the price to performance title pretty handedly, but in others, it loses out. It's a pretty uneven toss-up. For the US pricing, on the other hand, both of these cards are equally priced at $650, and the G1 Gaming takes a win for the price to performance. So what's the conclusion? The Gigabyte GTX 980 Ti G1 Gaming is a seriously powerful card. It performs exceptionally well at all resolutions and is certainly a formidable graphics card. However, with the aggressive pricing of the Galax GTX 980 Ti Hall of Fame Edition in South Africa, you'd likely be better off buying the Galax card and saving the extra 1500 Rand since you're not going to be crossing any major gaming thresholds with the G1 over the Hall of Fame. In the United States, based on completely on performance though, since both cards are equally priced, it appears that the G1 Gaming has an upper hand when it comes both to its stock performance as well as its overclockability. And I personally prefer the sleeker look of the G1 Gaming over the Hall of Fame card, so I definitely prefer to have this in my system. 
And with that, I'd like to give a huge thank you to Wootware for sponsoring this video on the Gigabyte GTX 980 Ti G1 Gaming Edition graphics card. Wootware is South Africa's premier computer components retailer with a wide selection of various products, including several different brands of 980 Ti's. So if you're in South Africa, head on over to wootware.co.za and woot up your life. So that's it for my review of the Gigabyte GTX 980 Ti G1 Gaming Graphics Card. Like this video if you found it helpful. Dislike it if it was more disappointing than the recent collapse that the RAND suffered against the dollar with like a 12% drop in one day. Like, that was ridiculous. You can subscribe to stay up to date on future graphics card videos, including a review I have coming out on the PowerColor R9 380X. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.